Okay, Alexander, now that uh, Brexit is done and all wrapped up, now that it looks like the UK is uh, opening back up again, that's the way it looks, that's the reports that I'm getting, Boris Johnson has got uh, what looks to be a big government uh, scandal on his hands now. So um, what's going on? We got a lot of palace intrigue here. What's the latest on the Boris Johnson government? We've got a phenomenal amount of palace intrigue. And as I said, I think this is essentially about Boris Johnson. And I think it is essentially about plotting to get Boris Johnson out of office, which I suspect he will be fairly soon. But can, can I just provide some explanation and background here? Because um, you're absolutely right. We are indeed moving towards opening up. I mean, uh, in London, where I live, uh, the opening up has been considerable. Schools are back to work. Uh, children are going to school. A lot of uh, uh, shops are open again. Food shops obviously have always been open, but you can now actually visit restaurants and you see people sitting outside. The weather's been very good. The atmosphere and the mood of the country has improved considerably. And there's also signs that the economy is picking up. Now, with all of that happening over the last few weeks, there has been a very considerable increase in electoral support for the government. Its popularity has grown and that of the Labour Party has sunk. And with the growing popularity of the government, two things have happened. Firstly, Boris Johnson has become more popular, but or, or was becoming more popular. But secondly, the Conservatives have been feeling more secure. They're now well in the lead again in the opinion polls. It is universally accepted and acknowledged that um, uh, the, the, the Labour Party under Keir Starmer poses no check to them, uh, no challenge to them. So they feel, feel secure in government. Boris Johnson has a host of enemies. He's always had enemies throughout his political life. He's no longer necessary or needed anymore in the way that he was. And when the Conservatives feel secure and you have a prime minister who's um, perhaps less than entirely trusted or liked by his own colleagues. The nature of the Conservative Party, it's a very, very ruthless party, is that is the plotting begins to take off. And this is what we're starting to see. Now, can I just say that one of the things that's extremely confusing about this affair is that there are two particular scandals which are, I suspect, going to start weaving themselves into one. The first one relates to a political enemy of Boris Johnson's, who is David Cameron, the previous prime minister. Now, he left office, as you we all remember, in 2016, after the Brexit referendum. He'd made a very big play before he became prime minister about how he was not going to tolerate any corruption himself and that he would not uh, uh, look favourably on ministers and former ministers engaging in lobbying for various uh, uh, companies or financial groups, the sort of um, you know revolving door that we hear so much about in which ministers and politicians and civil servants become involved in all sorts of activities that um, are obviously intended to make them rich. And of which, by the way, Tony Blair has been the supreme exponent. Anyway, Cameron said that he wouldn't do anything like that. It turned out that he did himself on a significant scale. He was working for a financier called Lex Greensill as a, more than just a consultant, but also as a lobbyist. He was receiving a great deal of money from Greensill. Greensill was even at one time a person who was, whilst Cameron was prime minister, working from Downing Street itself and had a Downing Street card. Then in March, Greensill went bankrupt. His business went bankrupt and Cameron's activities on his behalf were exposed. So that generated an awful lot of publicity about conservative corruption, uh, the cons corruption within government, corruption within the civil service, because it turned out that many top civil servants who are the full-time professional uh, officials of the British government, several of them have been involved in similar activities themselves. And that set the scene 
for what is now clearly looking like an attack on Boris Johnson. Now, the form this attack is taking is that his former chief aide, Dominic Cummings, the person whom you may remember made that dash, he broke the uh, lockdown, he rushed off to Durham, there was a big scandal involving him, you know, around this time last year, and then he was sacked because um, the uh, uh, Boris Johnson's partner, K Kerry Simmons, um, his fiance, uh, the mother of Johnson's latest child, was supposedly plotted against him, and Cummings, who'd been the chief organiser of the Vote Leave campaign, we were all worried at that time that his departure meant that you know this would be result in a backtracking on Brexit, but it didn't quite happen. Anyway, Dominic Cummings has now resurfaced and he's been spreading dribs and drabs of information um, out of a very extensive dossier of files, text messages, emails and the like that he has from Boris Johnson, which are drip bit by bit undermining Johnson's position. I mean, they call into question Bob Johnson's handling of the pandemic. They call into question uh, the renovation of the Prime Minister's flat in Downing Street. And apparently there are other um, things that are coming all the time. Now, Cummings, I am sure, is partly doing this out of revenge, but I am also pretty sure that he's been put up to do it by people within the Conservative Party. And it is interesting to see that some Conservative MPs who are known to be hostile to Johnson seem to be backing Cummings and are giving him political cover to enable him to uh, circulate this information which he has, none of which incidentally in and of itself and by itself would be particularly damning, taken you know, separately, but it's the accumulated picture which is difficult. Anyway, I am sure that this is an organised campaign and its intention is to bring Boris Johnson down. And I suspect that before very long it will. OK, so it's kind of a dick move by Cummings, isn't it, to do this? I mean, you can yeah. debate someone yeah. on, on policy. You can come out and, and question, you know, Boris Johnson's ability to, to govern and uh, and all these things. But it is kind of a, a, a sleazy move to leak out stuff. It, no matter what, oh, even, if, even if even if your former employer if he didn't do anything, you know, like very, very bad illegal stuff like that. I mean, to leak out text messages and stuff like that is kind of a dick move. Cameron, okay, Cameron is a dick. We already know that. So I expect that from Cameron. But from Cummings, I mean, it's, 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 this seems very, it's oh, politics, I... it's brutal, it's cutthroat. But this just makes Cummings look like just a, just a prick. Oh, I, I absolutely. Mean, no matter what you I'm... feel about Boris Johnson, no matter what you feel about Boris Johnson, it's just a prick move. My thoughts. I opinion. totally agree with that. I, 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 and I'm not just, just, just your opinion. It's my opinion also. I think it's the opinion of many people around the country as well. I mean, it's a disgraceful thing to do. I mean, if Dominic Cummings was so unhappy about all of these things, remember he was on the receiving end of many of these text messages, emails, and things. They would be sent to him if he thought that all this was very inappropriate and incredibly wrong, and that Boris Johnson wasn't running the country very well. Well, why did he not go? Why did he not? Why did he? not immediately resign, come along, say, you know, all this thing is happening, all these terrible things are happening, and, uh, uh, and uh, you know, I can't bear to work for this corrupt, immoral man. Uh, uh, and that would have been the right time to do that. Instead of which, he's, he, he, he didn't leave, he was basically sacked, he's waited, bided his time, and come up with all this information now, months after he was sacked, at a time when, as I said, the, the talk of corruption is very much in the air because of the Cameron business. But I don't think he's acting by himself. I think that's the first thing to say. I mean, obviously, Cummings' reputation is going to be 
utterly destroyed. Nobody is going to trust him ever again. And from this moment on, he is radioactive. Whether he realises that or not, I don't know. But I think he's also being used by powerful people within the Conservative Party. From their point of view, um, Boris has done his job. He got the Conservatives their majority, their 80-seat majority in the two. 2019 election. He got Brexit done after a fashion anyway. Now, as far as they're concerned, uh, Boris is expendable. They've never particularly liked him. They get him out of the way. One of them takes over. And, uh, um, um, you know, that's the nature of conservative politics, at least politics as they're often conducted within the Conservative Party. I mean, it is very predatory, very brutal. It gives a very, very sordid picture. One of the reasons they feel able to do it is because there is no effective challenge from the Labour Party. So this kind of brutal court politics, palace intrigues, palace coups, if you like, can take place in public because the Conservatives are confident, or at least the plotters within the party are confident, that there will be no electoral consequences. OK, so who is they in the Conservative Party? Who, who's angling to, to take power? Right. Well, I think that there are two people to watch. And I want to make it very clear now that I'm not suggesting that either of these two people is directly implicated in this in this plotting. I mean, there may be other people, but I think that there are two obvious people who are now rising and who could conceivably become conservative leader fairly soon. One, obviously, is Rishi Sunak. We've discussed him many times. He is the Chancellor of the Exchequer. He is an immensely rich man, very well connected. Uh, um, I think he's, you know, billionaire family that he, you know, he's married into, and he had a large amount of money of, of himself. He's clearly somebody who belongs very much in the sort of globalist bracket of things, if you like. He's, however, somebody who gets a lot of media support. And he's clearly, in my opinion, somebody who's very ambitious and wants to become prime minister. And then there is a new person on the block who is the business secretary, Kwasi Kwarteng, who has um, been somebody who people have been looking out at for a long time. Definitely a talented and clever man. And he has uh, he was kept in the background by Cameron for a long time. Cameron was afraid of him and uh, didn't like him. And my impression is that um, Johnson had queasy feelings about Kwarteng also. But Ka Kwarteng is now in the cabinet and he's rising fast. So again, I want to make it very clear, I'm not suggesting that either of these two men is necessarily behind all of this, of all of these coups or plots or schemes, but I wonder whether some people who are operating in the conservative backbenches, where these things tend to be worked out, people like Jeremy Hunt, for instance, whether they aren't pulling the strings and are saying to themselves, we've got two really strong candidates who are probably more effective at this time and better for us than Boris, and maybe it's time to clear Boris out and bring one of these people in. There are other people too. There's Priti Patel, who is the Home Secretary. I think there are, I think there are a lot of people who would feel extremely queasy about bringing her in because she takes a very hard line law and order view on all sorts of things. She would be the person I suspect the right of the Conservative Party would favour. And of course, there's Dominic Rabb, who's the foreign minister, who'd be the safe but very dull choice. And I can't really see him coming forward. But anyway, I think I've listed the main people. Who's uh, got Boris Johnson's back? If he's going to weather this storm, if he's going to come out of this in one piece, who who can that's he rely a, on? That's a very good question. Well, his fiance, who is clearly an important person. I mean, she's she's well conservative, connected in conservative politics. She should not be underestimated. She's a highly political person and she's got friends at the top of the conservative party. So she's by no means an insignificant ally. And I don't really see many anyone else, to be honest. I think, uh, um, well, there's Michael Gove. Michael Gove, who is also a senior official in the government. But I suspect Michael Gove and 
Johnson have had a rocky relationship in the past. I don't think they entirely trust her, trust each other. I think that if Gove were to support Johnson now, it would be because he thinks that if he keeps Johnson as prime minister, he makes the position easier for him, he himself, to get a shot to becoming prime minister in the future. Um, or it could be that uh, uh, Gove is, in fact, one of the plotters. One never completely knows. I would point out that Dominic Cummings and Michael Gove have a long-standing relationship. Cummings used to be, for many years, Michael Gove's aide. And um, Co Gove and Cummings had a falling out, but then they patched it up. And it's quite possible that Cummings and Gove are working together on this. I mean, I should make it very clear, I am not privy to internal conservative politics, but I can smell a plot. When I, you know, when I smell a plot, I know one. And this has all the appearances of a plot to me. Who is standing by Boris? I am not sure. Who is working against him? I'm not absolutely sure either, other, either than, other than Cummings himself. Um, who will win out in the end? That remains to be seen. I mean, do the people have Boris Johnson's back? I mean, do we have any indication of approval ratings for Boris Johnson? Not the Conservative Party. But just Boris Johnson himself. I mean, are yeah. there any numbers that you've seen? Or yeah, anything? I, 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 no, I mean Boris Johnson is by far the most popular of the cons uh, conservative politician at the moment, and I mean, he 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 has his detractors. The left in Britain, you know, the people left of centre don't like him at all. but they loathe him. And of course, anybody who voted Remain loathes him also. So he's got that problem. Um, but he does have undoubtedly um, a reach to parts of the British population that no other uh, conservative leader I can think of could achieve. And that actually, I'm sure, is the one thing that is playing for him. I mean, there will be conservatives who will say to themselves, well, this is, you know, are we really ready to get rid of a strong, well, at least a strong vote winner, even if we do have concerns about his style of management and his problems of management, which were, which are anyway or always well known, and which most British voters don't seem to care about. Um, but I have to say, I mean, bear in mind that when the Conservative Party moved against Margaret Thatcher in 1990, she'd won three elections <laughs> at that time. She looked to be, you know, the dominant, well, she was the dominant person in British politics. And yet they still moved against her and ousted her from power. So sometimes the Conservatives will act in an, their usual incredibly ruthless and predatory way without really thinking through what the electoral implications of it might be. Given how weak the Labour Party looks at the moment, I suspect, by the way, that their calculation that if they do move against Johnson now, um, whichever leader they put in, be it Sunak and Quart or Quarteng or uh, um, Pretty Patel or even conceivably Michael Gove, would still probably win the next election. I suspect that's probably right. And I'm going to say it also, um, both Sunak and Quarteng look to me to be extremely skillful politicians. So, who, who's to say? Okay, well, let's see. It does show you, by the way, two. Th it does show you two things, by the way. One, firstly, I mean, you know, the British politics can be extremely ruthless, especially when conducted by the Conservatives. You know, this can be very. It's it's that kind of a party. It also shows you how, in some ways, dysfunctional this Conservative government and party are. I um, mean, they became uh, the government, the dominant party in 2010. And since then, we've had four prime ministers. We've had Cameron, Theresa May. Well, goodness knows, we don't want to perhaps remember her. And, that, and then we've had Boris Johnson. Well, perhaps a fourth <laughs> before long. Yeah, that's not a good sign. That, that really it's is not, not a good, good sign. sign. It's yeah. not a good sign.
But there we go. Well, there we go. All right, palace intrigue in the UK. All right, well, uh, <laughs> it's always it's always fun. It's always fun. I don't know. I don't know what it really all means at the end of the day, but it's always fun to watch, and uh, we'll see how it turns out. And I mean, I ought to say also that some of this uh, corruption that's been pointed out. I mean, the Cameron scandal is a real one that is that is particularly ugly actually i mean he was saying one thing about you know you know how honorable everybody must be and at the same time he was acting in private in a completely different and frankly very unscrupulous way so that 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 is an ugly scandal i'm not so convinced about these ones that attach to bot to johnson himself but you know no, none of it gives a particularly edifying picture but then you know, we're all realistic about what goes on. Um, there's nothing comparable to what you see in France, or Italy, or dare I say, the United States in any of these scandals that I've seen so far. Yeah, well, they're politicians or, at the end of the day. They're politicians so. at the end of the day. Indeed. Yeah. Germany I, also, by the way. I mean, yeah. I mean, Germany, when Germans do scandals, and corruption, they do it in a very big way. This is not on the scale of Wirecard, for example. Hmm. Yeah. Politicians will be politicians there we are. in any country you go to. Pop. <laughs> in any, absolutely true. That's, that's yeah. so true. That is so, so uh, true. <laughs> All right, we'll leave it there. I'll drop a 10% discount code, guys, in the description box down below. Use the code REALNEWS10% off all Duran merch. Take care.